Good morning, John. Good morning. Uh, it's very hot in Cambridge. It is, yes. A beautiful summer that we are having. But today we're going to talk about the first landing on the moon. Right. And I'd love you just to share your experiences of how it felt to, to be alive and when this happened and where you were and, and, and your reflections. Well, I, I uh, remember very well. Uh, I happened to be in the States at the time. I was uh, working in the... Uh, Theoretical Division of the Radiation Laboratory in, in Berkeley, California. And in the summer, my uh, wife and our two young children came out and joined me in Berkeley. We uh, rented a house in the Berkeley Hills and we all sat out that night to watch this uh, landing on television. And of course it was, it was a sort of great occasion. It was a remarkable event, but I think it's important to understand in the, in the radiation laboratory, there was also a, a very remarkable device, which was called the Bevatron, which was a, very, a large accelerating machine. And that was a machine which was not only technologically a great achievement, as of course the moon landing was an enormous technological achievement, but also produced a lot of very interesting, important scientific results. Um, to, to verify the existence of the antiproton, discover all sorts of things that led eventually to the idea of the quark structure of matter. The moon landing, interesting and impressive, very impressive that it was technologically, was not really scientifically very uh, significant. Mm -hmm. um, we didn't learn anything critical from it that we didn't know before. It disposed one or two rather ridiculous scientific theories. There was a very ingenious but somewhat wayward uh, English um, astrophysicist called Tommy Gold, and he believed that the moon was covered in a very deep layer of dust, <laughs> and that when the... When the uh, landing thing would, would arrive at the moon, it would sink into the dust to be submerged. <laughs> and it was shown that wasn't right, but I don't think many people expected it to be. So it was a striking event, but not, I think, tremendously significant scientifically, but as, as, a, as, a techno as an astonishing technological achievement. So lots of people question the landing on the moon. It's people say, did it really happen? Um, why only the Americans? What's your... uh, I'm sure. I'm sure it really happened. I, I, uh, whenever you have some remarkable event like this, you always have these conspiracy theories that say that it didn't really happen. It was all rigged up by the CIA or something like that. I mean, I think it's unbelievable that this thing was was faked up. It would be an extraordinarily difficult thing to do, and uh, so I don't think there's any any reason to uh, give any thought really to that possibility. It was done by the Americans because it was a tremendously challenging technological feat and only they had the resources and ability to devote themselves to doing it. And they did it, I think, partly as, of course, as an assertion of national pride that they would be the first person to do that. So that's, that's how I would evaluate it. So you said not much was learnt scientifically. So scientifically not much was learnt from it. No, that, that's right. It's, uh, I mean, <laughs> you know, you like the moon is there and its surface is more as what we thought it was. And uh, but so it was, it was the, just the ability to do it which was the most striking thing about it. So to be alive when this happened was with your children in America? Well, there was a great deal of excitement, I think, probably all over the world. But obviously, particularly in the States, the national pride, having achieved that, it was, it was a very remarkable thing to do, after all, to go through a quarter of a million miles of space and land on this moon, and to get away again at the end, of course, <laughs> which is also quite a tricky thing. So... So it was, a, it was a remarkable event, but as I say, not, um, not as intrinsically significant as one might have first think. Do you think it had any significance on, on religious beliefs at all? Well, I, I don't see that it would. I, mean, but I think, obviously, if we'd, if we'd discovered life on the moon or something like that, that would raise very interesting religious questions. That was never a prospect, really. The moon is just too dry and has virtually no atmosphere, so... The idea that there would be life there is, was, was never very credible. So I don't think it has great religious significance, except, if you like, about the, the pride of, of human kind and our ability to do things. If you could go anywhere in space, yeah. where would you like to go? Where would I like to go? Well, I think I would actually like to go somewhere quite near, which, um, which is to Mars. Because Mars is a place where life might have developed. I don't think there's life on Mars now. There might be some bacterial life. But it would be very interesting to see that because it's, it has the right sort of um, circumstances that would permit life to develop. 
What we don't know scientifically is, given all that, whether the development of life is an inevitability, uh, whether the genetic code is an inevitability, that sort of thing. But if we found life on Mars, even if it was only primitive bacterial life, we could study its DNA, we could know whether it was the same as terrestrial DNA or different, that, does, that would be a very significant discovery. But that's much more difficult, of course, but we seem to be getting in that direction. Not, I think, for a while with manned landing on Mars, but with uh, clever instruments. So, John, this is probably why the, the Russians and other countries have spent money going to Mars rather than going to the Moon. Well, I think that's... Um, I don't know exactly why. <laughs> I mean, it would be, it would be a, a, sa- a second best, so to speak, to go to the Moon, since it's been done before. If you were the first person to arrive on Mars, that would be a genuine first of a very remarkable kind and could yield very important significant results. So I think I think any any nation, advanced technological nation, that found it had a lot of um, money and time and talent to, to invest in such a project would choose Mars. Perfect, John. Thank you for sharing your memories, John, and we will speak with you soon.